why don't you join us we're going to sing praises to our God Please do take your seats. It's great to be with you this evening. My name is Miles. I'm a member of this church, and uh, I'll be leading us through parts of this service. But really, this evening, it's going to be a great opportunity for us to hear from different voices, uh, some of uh, the students who are part of our church community, and many voices from different parts of the world. We're going to hear uh, from friends from Ukraine, uh, from Iran, from Nigeria, and also a new friend from New Zealand. So uh, it's going to be really good to hear these different voices, each reflect in their own way, uh, many in their own languages, uh, what it means to celebrate the birth of Jesus, what it means to come and worship him. And um, If you are a guest with us here this evening, if you don't normally attend our church, we're so glad uh, that you accepted an invitation and came along. It's brilliant that you're with us, uh, and I hope that you'll have a really fantastic evening, uh, that it will be interesting engaging, fun, uh, inspiring. And most of all, we really hope that you'll get a sense of this wonderful story, this story of a baby born in a manger, a baby who is not just a baby, but the king of kings. 
And with that in mind, I'm going to invite our friends uh, from Ukraine to come and join us. Um, they're going to be sharing a medley of carols. And uh, you'll have to forgive us uh, English band here. We're doing our very best. And uh, we've really enjoyed learning these songs. Um, but we're going to be really blessed now as we hear from them. As they take their places, I'm going to pray for us at the outset of our um, service together. So uh, why don't you join me in prayer now? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for the wonderful news of Christmas. Father, thank you that on this cold, uh, snowy day, who'd have expected that, we can gather together like this and celebrate the coming of Jesus. Thank you that this is a message of hope, it's a message of joy, and it's a message for everyone. And Lord, I pray this evening that we would realize that maybe for the first time or maybe for the thousandth time, in a deeper and a new way. Lord, would you speak to us this evening, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you. Wasn't that wonderful? That was great. You know, we practiced that five, six, seven times. That was the best time. So you really came to the right performance. That was good. Um, it was brilliant, really wonderful. Um, and now um, in English, so those of you for whom that's your first language will be able to follow along. Uh, two of our students are going to lead us in some prayers. So let me invite them up. Where are they? Are oh, they making their way towards us? That's brilliant. So Annabelle and Habib are going to lead us in a time of prayer, so please do join us as we pray. Um, let's pray. Um, Lord, thank you so much for Christmas. Um, it is so amazing that the creator of the universe would humble himself and come to earth as a baby. Uh, thank you for sending Jesus so that we might have a personal relationship with you. We recognize that while Christmas is a time of happiness and joy for so many, it can also be a really difficult time for a lot of people. 
Please be with those who are struggling with bereavement, illness, or complicated family situations this Christmas time. I pray that you would be with these individuals especially in the upcoming weeks. They would feel your presence and comfort in their lives. Thank you that the Christmas message is so full of hope and joy that is available to anyone who wants to accept it. No matter what situation we're in, I pray for all of us here, um, that all of us here who will share Christmas Day with family members and friends who do not yet know you, please give us the strength and the wisdom to share with them why we believe Christmas is so amazing. By your spirit, give us the right words to share over the dinner table about our love for Jesus. I pray that those conversations would be fruitful, that you would soften the hearts of those listening who won't want to know more about you. Thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you also for the Hub Community event taking place on Wednesday, as this is also an amazing opportunity to share, with, to share you with our local community. We pray that the event would go smoothly, that people would come, feel welcomed, and most importantly, get to hear about the good news of Jesus. Finally, we pray for the charities we're supporting through our offerings tonight. Please have your hands on all their amazing work that they're doing and help the leaders of Safe Families and Great Lakes Outreach to impact the lives of those who they work with. I pray that even in times of financial difficulty for many, these charities would receive generous provisions for their work this Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I just thank you for the love that you've lavished upon us and for the gifts that you've given us and for the wondrous gift that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for our sins. Just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just fill this room and that your presence would overshadow us. Just pray, Lord, that during this time of Christmas that you would comfort us, or comfort us in all that we're going through, whether that would be work or family, personal issues. We just pray, Lord, that you would be gracious to us and willing to help us in our time of need. And just pray, Lord, that the face of your son would shine upon us and that all of us here would truly know that God loves all of us even more than we could ever hope or imagine. And I just thank you for that, Lord Jesus. To you be glory forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you both. Christmas is a, a time of giving, but really it's a time most of all when God gave the greatest gift. And so as a, a community of Christians here at church, we, we want this to be a time where we can be generous um, to those that we might be in a position to help. And so each year we, we give some thought and um, reflect on, on how we could make maybe a small difference. And, and two uh, charities that we're supporting this year, Annabelle mentioned them in her prayer, um, and you're welcome to contribute to those if you'd like to, um, are Safer Families, who are kind of working locally but also nationally, um, an organisation that helps to support families when they reach really difficult um, difficult seasons and help them through and, and offer that kind of support that can make all the difference. Um, then Great Lakes Outreach is um, based in Burundi and doing a wonderful work there um, for many people in really difficult circumstances as well. So we're going to just see a short video um, now about that in a moment. And, and just to say on, on the screen here, you can see different ways that you can um, donate to these and, and be a part of what we're, we're trying to do here this evening and this Christmas time to support these charities. Um, so you're very welcome to support them if you would like to as well. Um, so let's just see the short video uh, to see a bit more about Great Lakes Outreach. Thanks, Will. Burundian are struggling. The war left many orphans and widows behind. Kids don't go to school and many people can barely afford to eat once a day. The political unrest, the genocide, has affected the churches. Beautiful but broken Burundi has experienced decades of hunger and violence and poverty and poor leadership. For Burundi to be healed, the church needs to be the church. The community where well, unity is reality. GLOW works strategically across education and evangelism, discipleship and street kids and all sorts of different ministries for the empowerment of the nation. Our mission is to train people and to strengthen vulnerable communities and families to a holistic transformation. 
I can do mission where we are. We can reach out the community where we are. We are building a house for Budesiam. She's one of the widows. Join us in being part of this beautiful movement in Burundi. Wonderful. Well, keeping that theme of, of how we can have an impact uh, in different parts of the world and, and getting to know people from different parts of the world, we're going to invite our friends uh, from Iran to come and join us now. And we're going to enjoy another of our international carols. This uh, carol is spoken in Farsi. And uh, so please do enjoy. Thank you. Oh, I should say, you can see the words on the screen so you can understand the, the meaning of what we're seeing there. Good news, Jesus is born. Well, it's um, your turn to sing again. We're going to sing a wonderful um, carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Uh, like many of these songs, they retell this story that's so familiar. Um, but there's an invitation at the end of this. And this is a wonderful prayer to pray. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. So that's a wonderful prayer to pray at this time of year. Why don't we stand and we're going to sing together this carol. Stars to 
Please do take your seats. And two more of our students, Lauren and another Miles. I don't think I've ever been on the platform here with another Miles before. So this is a historic occasion. Um, they're going to read the Bible to us. Thank you, guys. That's great. I think it might appear on the screen. There you go. It's in Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was sub-governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David... A saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. Fantastic. Thank you, both of you. And uh, in just a moment, Ben's going to be opening up that passage to us. Um, Many of you won't know Ben. Um, Ben has made an extraordinary journey to be here today. Well, I don't know if it's exclusively to be here today, but um, Ben, you normally live in New Zealand. And so, I mean, who would give up the summer in New Zealand to come to a uh, uh, where the sleet is falling in Bournemouth and it's, uh, it's a bit miserable. But we're really grateful that you're here with us. Um, ben works with university students across New Zealand and uh, he's going to be sharing the Christmas message with us in just a moment. But before he does, our, our friends from Nigeria are going to join us. Um, please do come and, and join us here on the platform. Um, and I know the song they're going to be sharing with us and uh, it will bring a bit of sunshine. We need that today, don't we? 
So uh, this is a wonderful Nigerian carol. Uh, it's about the story that we've just heard told uh, of shepherds. And it's about ringing those Christmas bells and rejoicing because of what Jesus has done. So we'll just let them take their places. But um, I was already feeling a bit underdressed uh, this evening. <laughs> Wonderful. 
there are some songs which are uh, really catchy. They get stuck in your head, don't you? And that one's been going around my head since our practice last Friday. It's uh, brilliant, really joyful. Um, how do you follow that, Ben? Anyway, um, really lovely to have you with us, and uh, we're really glad you're going to share a bit about the Christmas message with us now. Thank you so much. Me. Yep, okay, you can hear me. Uh, how do you follow that? Well, I'll bring you Christmas greetings from New Zealand. Merry <laughs> Kirihimiti, uh, as they say in New Zealand. It really is super to be here at Lansdowne. Uh, I really didn't know what I was coming to, uh, and possibly you didn't either, but what a truly international flavour evening as we celebrate Christmas together. Uh, this church holds a special place in my family, and my mum, who I still have to listen to despite living the other side of the world, uh, asked me to remind folks and say, look, this was a great place for her just after she'd finished her studies as she was nursing. So it's a church that has fond memories for my family. I think it's the first time I visited, so it really is super to be here. Um, I love Christmas, and I really love a Northern Hemisphere Christmas. And you even put on the snow here in Bournemouth today for me, so it, it's especially good. I want you to think just for a few minutes with me together about Christmas. And I want to ask you, as you think about Christmas from all over the world, if you could summarize Christmas in two words, what would you say? What would those two words be? Now, I don't know how you do things around here, so forgive me if this is something you don't do. Maybe shout out some of the two words that you think of when you think of Christmas. I might pick up on some of them. Jesus. That's a, it's always a good answer in church. I'll come back to that. Okay, what else? Two words. Two words. It's got to be two words together. Nice food. Mince pies. Jingle bells. Uh, something and family, seeing. seeing family. Any others? Well, here's a few that I thought of. White Christmas, who knows? You might get it this year here in Bournemouth. Cliff Richard. <laughs> if you need to get away from Cliff Richard, move to New Zealand. Father Christmas. Christmas crackers. I learned this week that in the United States of America, they don't know what Christmas crackers are. Brussels sprouts, whoa. Christmas pudding, Christmas cake. Now I'm a Yorkshireman, so when you hear Christmas cake, the next two words are Wensleydale cheese. If you've never had Christmas cake with Wensleydale cheese, this year is the year for you. You should try it. Christmas presents. I suppose as an Englishman, the Queen's speech. This year, it'll be the King's speech. Christmas can be summed up in all sorts of words. The two words that I think of when I think of Christmas are the beach. <laughs> you see, Christmas occurs right in the middle of our summer. Songs, we've not sung it tonight, songs like In the Bleak Midwinter, they lose some of their meaning when you sing it on a hot summer's day, which is why, if you don't mind... those of you that can't see, this is my Kiwi Christmas t-shirt with Kiwis on it, an ugly t-shirt. So, I, I love Christmas. In fact, one of the things I miss about being here in the UK is Christmas in the cold. Before you get too caught up thinking that New Zealand is a lovely hot place, it is a lovely place and sometimes it gets hot, but we're not quite like Australia. I'll just check before I go any further. Have I got any Kiwis in the crowd tonight? Any Australians? Okay, I'm safe. I can say whatever I want then. In New Zealand, there are no guarantees you'll get down to the beach on Christmas Day. It's a bit different to Australia. In fact, most days on Christmas Day in New Zealand, where I live in Wellington, it's so windy that you can't even sit outside. But some years, it's hot enough that you can just go down. Most, it's not. But why do I say the beach when I think of Christmas? if it's not somewhere Kiwis go for Christmas. Well, if I'm honest, I'm not just thinking any beach, but I'm thinking one particular beach. I think we're gonna have a picture of it in a moment. In the north of New Zealand's North Island, Oihi Bay, in the Bay of Islands, right up at the top 
of the North Island. It's a beach that has significance in New Zealand's history and my own personal story. Let me tell you briefly why. Christmas Day, 1814, 208 years ago, a man by the name of Samuel Marsden, who was living in Australia at the time, he was a Brit, moved across and arrived on the shores of New Zealand and he proclaimed the first Christian message to be heard in New Zealand. It was the first Christian message, and it was actually a Christmas message, the one that we had read to us earlier. The proclamation of the angel pronouncing the arrival of Jesus' birth with these words, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour who is Christ the Lord. It's a story of significance in New Zealand's history as the Christian message arrived into New Zealand. And many New Zealanders will have been told about Samuel Marsden. I realise here in the UK, not many people would know that name. The indigenous people of New Zealand, the Maori, really hold Samuel Marsden in high esteem for what he did for them as a people group. And in New Zealand, we didn't sing it tonight. I should have told you, Miles, about it. We have a Christmas carol, Te Haranui, that sings about the event and how it happened in the middle of summer. It's a lovely song. You can Google it later on. But why does that beach hold significance for me? Well, I'm a Yorkshireman. I'm a proud Yorkshireman up in the north of England. And the village that I came from or come from in Yorkshire is also the village that Samuel Marsden came from. And so as a missionary to New Zealand myself, I'm following in the footsteps of someone from my hometown. In fact, so much so that our eldest son shares the name Samuel deliberately. Eight years ago, we met with several thousand other people on this beach on Christmas Day commemorating 200 years since the Christian message arrived in New Zealand. It's not just any beach. It's a very special beach. And when I think about Christmas, it's not just the beach I think about, but the message that was shared at the beach. Luke 2, 10 and 11. You're going to hear me say it a few times. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour who is Christ the Lord. Now, if you're like me, tomorrow at work or in school, people will ask you, what were you doing over the weekend? And one of the things I hope that you might be able to say is, well, I went to this fantastic carol service at Lansdowne Baptist. You missed out on it. And if people are disappointed they've missed out, I see there's a carol service next week. So you can say, come to that one. It'll be a bit different, I think, but brilliant to invite people to. But they might ask, well, what was that all about? I'm going to make it really easy for you. I want to give you four lots of two words about Christmas. What is Christmas really about? First, good news. Did you hear it? I bring you good news. We live in a world of so much bad news. You don't need me to tell you that. And I'm not just talking about football there. I arrived back on the shores of the UK about a month ago. I have never had so many people, friends around the country, right across the political spectrum, tell me Britain is broken in many areas of society. Politically, it's not good news. I can see that in the papers when I read them from New Zealand. In the environment, climate change, in society, Globally, super to have the Ukrainians there singing despite the circumstances going on. Some of you will remember the newsreader Sir Trevor MacDonald. I'm told that when he used to read the news on ITV, he would regularly at the end of the news break down and weep. You see, we live in a world of so much bad news. And many people think that Christianity is just a part of that. But this proclamation says something very different. You see, Christianity, the Christian message, is good news. Much of the media coverage you'll hear, or see, will have you believe that Christianity is bad, 
People like Richard Dawkins will tell you, oh, don't believe that. Christians, Christianity is bad. But it's not true. That's not true. Christianity is good news and it's true news. And why is it good news? Well, because it's about a person and not just any person, but a very special person. As we sing in the carol, he came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. So when we sing of this baby in the manger, we are singing of almighty God who made him so, so, so small and became a little baby. It's good news. I don't know about you, but sometimes you describe people to other people, and sometimes people use the phrase, oh, they're bad news. That is not true of Jesus. The way the angels describe him is right. The way Pilate described him in Jesus' trial at the end of his life. I find no fault in him. Jesus is good news. And that is why Christians want to tell others about it. Because it's good news. Because Jesus is good news. Christmas is a very special time for me. It was around Christmas that I got engaged to my now wife. And what happens when you have good news? December 21st, when we got engaged. What was the first thing that Jen went and did well we told people about it she walked around like that showing off her ring making sure people had seen because we had good news and likewise for Christians we have good news and so we want to tell others about this like the angel with the shepherds we want others to hear and experience it for themselves good news first two words second two words great joy I bring you good news of great joy. And as with most good news, it comes with great joy. Again, it's not what people automatically think of when they think of Christianity. But joy is supposed to be normal for Christians. That New Zealand Christmas carol, Te Haranui, is your little Maori language lesson. Te means the. Hari means happy. And Nui means big. Te Haranui, the big happy. That is our message. The big happy. And when people understand who Jesus is and why he came, he brings real joy. He makes a difference in people's lives and in the world around us. Christianity is to bring joy. Now, I've not seen the order of service. It might be the last carol we sing. Maybe not. But that's why Christians sing joy to the world. The Lord Jesus has come. Now, let's be clear. That doesn't mean that sadness or difficulty won't come. Or that it's wrong to experience those things. But the Christian message is to bring joy. And if we don't see or experience some of that, then something's wrong. I'll never forget, I work with students, as Miles shared, I'll never forget some years ago being at a student camp in New Zealand. I work telling students about Jesus and helping them investigate who he is for themselves. And there was a student who'd been coming along to our groups, considering Christianity for himself. He came from a Buddhist background, and it would be quite costly if he trusted Jesus. At one of the final meals of the camp, he quietened everyone down, stood up and said to them, I want to tell you I've made the decision to follow Jesus and to trust him. And I will never forget, as he shared that news, everyone was banging on the tables, cheering. Why? Because Christianity is good news of great joy. And through the Bible, we see that in Jesus' life and in the stories he tells. I don't know if you know your Bible stories. Luke chapter 15. Three stories in quick succession. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. What happens in each of those stories? Well, you have to read them for yourself. But whatever has been lost, whether it be the sheep or the coin or the son, when they're found, we're told there is joy before the angels of God over a sinner repenting. You see, the gospel... Christian message brings joy in heaven, but also joy on earth. And what happens when something joyful happens? 
You want to tell other people about it. You want to spread the word, spread the joy. And that is one of the privileges of my work with students in New Zealand. I get to see and experience firsthand the joy of seeing lives changed by Jesus, by the good news of Jesus. And it's not just joy for one person, it's intended for many. And so in the Christmas story, we read of the angel coming to tell the shepherds to come and see, come and experience this this joy. It was read to us in that same story. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. I'm visiting from New Zealand, as has been said. So I don't know most of you here tonight. But maybe you're here tonight because you've been invited by a friend or a family member. Maybe you're thinking, why have they invited me to this? Well, let me tell you. Because like the angel telling the shepherds, your friend, your family member want you to know and experience the good news of great joy for yourself. When people experience the Christian message, they want to tell others of this uncontainable joy so that they can go away too, glorifying and praising God. Good news, great joy, third two words, for all people, all people. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Right from the outset, the message of Christianity is clear. It is for all people. It is not just for English people. And that's terrific, particularly if you're Scottish or Welsh or Irish or whatever nationality you may be. It's not something that is exclusive, but rather is inclusive of all. We've heard lots in recent days with the football going on about tolerance and intolerance. Let's be absolutely clear. Christianity is a message for all people. The message came from the, uh, to the shepherds from the angel, helping them realize that the Christian message was for all people. And it started with them, Jewish people. But let's not lose sight of who those shepherds were. They were the outcasts of society, the lowest of the low. And the message came to them first. As you go through the biography of Jesus, of Luke, Luke's biography of Jesus, and then his sequel, the book of Acts, it's clear time and time again that the Christian message is not just for the Jews, but for all people, for the non-Jews, for the whole world. The scope of it is beyond what we would think. Yes, it's for the shepherds on the hills, but it's also for the wise men from the east. Throughout the Bible, you read of all sorts of people, tax collectors, sinners, immoral people, the thief on the cross, the good and the respectable people, young and old, poor, wealthy, It's easy to think that Christianity and the Christian message isn't for me. No, it is for all people. And so I say to you tonight, lovingly, whoever you are, whatever your background, whatever you think of yourself, Christianity, this Christmas message is for you. There's not much news that we get in our society that really is for all people. Have we got any French people here tonight? No? I think we may have French speakers, but maybe not French people. Possibly wouldn't admit that they're French today after yesterday. If you're French, you got some good news yesterday at the final whistle of a football match. But if you're English, the French person's good news was bad news. But this, Christianity, is good news for all people. And it's that conviction that Christianity is good news for all people that led to my wife and I 15 years ago moving from England, where I love, and I love it here, over to New Zealand to share this message, this good news of great joy to the people of New Zealand. Why would I do that? Why would this church put on a a carol service for people from around the world? Because Jesus' followers are called to be witnesses in Jerusalem, the first place where the message arrived, and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, if you want to know where the ends of the earth are, New Zealand's a pretty long way away. 
And for those of us who have heard this good news, we've seen it for ourselves, we've experienced it, and our responsibility is to be witnesses. That's not all the message, though. Good news, great joy, all people. It's about a saviour born. See, if you want to know what Christmas is all about, it really is summed up in those final two words, saviour born. About Jesus being born in a manger as the saviour of the world. Look at what the, what the angel says of him. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour who is Christ the Lord. He's born in the city of the shepherd king David. He's a saviour. Mary had already been told his name is Jesus, which means the Lord saves. He's coming to save his people from their sins. It's a term that was used of gods and military and political figures like Julius Caesar. But here the angel says, look, this is more meaningful than that. The angel is pointing to the rescue that Jesus will accomplish. That he's come to save people who don't need, know that they need saving. He's come to save people from trying to save themselves with good works. He's come to die on a cross and to take on himself the sins of the world to offer salvation and forgiveness to all who will believe. The Father, God, has sent the Son, Jesus, to be the saviour of the world. A saviour? The Christ. He's God's chosen one, the Messiah. This is more than someone calling themselves the special one. He is the Christ, the one promised from the start of the Bible as part of God's perfect plan, so that God's chosen one would be the one in whom salvation is found. For there is, uh, for in, there is salvation in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. Jesus is the Christ. And Jesus is the Lord. It's actually Christ the Lord. God's anointing is tied with God's positioning. The chosen one is the sovereign one, the anointed one. And the angel describes Jesus in the highest possible terms. And one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's the Christmas message. Good news. Great joy for all people. Saviour has been born. Christ the Lord. And our prayer, and I know the prayer of the folks here in this church, is that each of you, whoever you are, whatever you've done, wherever you come from, might come to know the Lord Jesus, the one who was born in the manger, who lived a perfect life, God in human flesh, who died on a cross despite being fully God and perfectly good as he took on himself the sins of the world. He's the one who rose again and came back to life. He's the one who will one day return to judge the living and the dead. And as we sing at Christmas, our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. When will we see him? Well, not in that poor lowly stable with the oxen standing by. We shall see him but in heaven, set at God's right hand on high. This Christmas, I pray that you would hear the Christmas message and that you would behold and see the good news of great joy for all people, including you, and that you would experience the joy of knowing him as Saviour and Lord. Because Christmas is good news of great joy for all people. A Saviour has been born. I want to finish there, but I want to offer you a gift. It's a gift for those that want to explore Christmas for themselves. Maybe you've come here tonight and maybe this is the first time you've heard really what Christmas is all about. 
about. Or maybe you're here and you've known what Christmas is about, but tonight you've heard about Jesus and you want to find out more about him. At the information desk at the back, and I think in some other places, there's a prayer point somewhere, there's a little bag with a range of goodies in it. But in that bag is Luke's biography of Jesus, telling the story of Jesus throughout his life. And I want to challenge you, why not take one of those as a free gift from us? There'll be no catch. We're not out to trap you. We want you to find this good news of great joy for all people, for yourself. Why not have a read of it? It'll be found at the information desk. There are other goodies. There's other things, Christmas gifts in there. But go and take one of those. I pray that this year you might discover the good news of great joy for all people that a saviour has been born. Merry Christmas. God bless. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, and yeah, afterwards, do go and grab one of those bags if you're a guest here this evening. And uh, there's only one way to find out, really, isn't there, if this is really good news of great joy, and that's to find out for yourself. And so I'd really challenge you, as Ben said, to pick one of those up and to read for yourself this Christmas time, the true meaning of Christmas. So um, that's, a, that's a great thing to take away. And we're going to finish this evening with um, a wonderful carol. Um, a carol that reminds us of this, this great king, God's chosen one, who was born that man no more shall die. So we're going to stand, we're going to sing together, Hark the Herald Angel Sing. Why don't you join me and let's stand and sing together. Well, why don't you take a seat? And um, before I pray uh, at the end of our service, I just want to mention a few things. As Ben said, those gift bags are available. Um, 
I'm told there are little chockies in there, but the most precious thing by far in that bag is the message of Jesus. Um, why not make this Christmas the one where you discover for the first time really what Christmas is all about? Please do take that gift and uh, see what it's all about for yourself. Um, but another few things to mention, um, we're serving refreshments in the hall, just kind of if you go directly through these doors into the back there, and also in the hub, which you will have come through uh, as you came in this evening. Um, do stick around, do get to know people, uh, do meet people. Uh, if you're a regular here, uh, do say hello to people and uh, make sure that everyone gets a really warm welcome here this evening. We want everyone to feel at home here at church. And, and please don't make this the last time that you're here, especially if this is maybe your first time or you're not a regular with us. There's lots of things which uh, you can come back to, especially over this Christmas time. So uh, this time next week, uh, 7 p.m., uh, it's a bit easier decision, isn't it, now to come along <laughs> next Sunday evening now that uh, things have transpired in the football. But it'd be great for you to join us again uh, next Sunday evening for our traditional carol service. Um, there'll be more carols to sing, um, and it'll be wonderful to be there. And again, to think about what it really means to celebrate uh, this Christmas message. Um, and then also during the week, um, on Wednesday um, from 12 till 2 p.m., we've got uh, carols here in the hub, or, or Christmas, community Christmas here in the hub. So it would be wonderful for you to join us um, for that. I think that's everything I've been told to share. There's always a big long list and I can never remember everything, but I think we've done most of it. I'm going to pray for us um, as we close our time together. Lord, thank you so much for the message that we've heard. This evening, that reminder that Christmas isn't ultimately about time with family or about tasty food, or about what's on TV, or whatever else it might be, whatever else might spring to mind for us. Deep down, ultimately, Christmas is about this good news of great joy. This news that isn't just for some, but it's for everyone. This news of a saviour who's been born. So, Father, this evening I pray for everyone here that in a new way, in a deeper way, each of us would come to terms with that wonderful truth. Each of us would see, as with opened eyes, that a saviour has been born, a saviour for us. That this isn't an ancient story that has nothing to do with us. It's a story for me to believe, to take hold of tonight. Lord, help us to respond to this message, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. See you again soon. God bless.